Hey, it's Mazzy here. Let's talk about the ERC debut Doors album, Mono. ERC is that label out of the UK that does all analog, in this case with a mono cutting head, uh, limited editions, very high-end records with custom-made silkscreen covers and going uh, from the master tapes whenever possible. That's the thing that all these companies say whenever possible. And in this case, uh, there was a little bit of confusion here. Now, before I get into this, uh, there are two links below. First of all, I have to thank Marcella. Uh, she has a channel where he, she showcases, uh, plays records and shows the record playing in her house in the Netherlands with these custom designed speakers that she designed and built. And they're pretty amazing. So there will be a link below to her playing one song, I believe, from this ERC Doors record. And the kindness of her heart, she sent me a copy and I got a sealed copy. Now, there's also another link below to that unboxing. Now, I hate unboxings. And I did that as a showcase to see, to showcase for you what these things look like when they arrive and uh, my copy was sealed uh, i got copy number 256 uh, and in that video you'll see the opening the card and there are a couple of issues and now as of this recording uh the cheapest copy of this on discogs from germany i believe is just under 700 dollars shipped to the u.s all the other ones are above i think the the closest one uh, to me in the States is just under $800. So if any of you want to buy a copy of this mono debut Doors album cut from the Lido tape, I'll get into the latter a little bit, um, you can get it for seven to $800. Now, let me say this up front. I am not the customer base or targeted audience for ERC records. I'm not one who would ever pay, I think these sold for $450 to begin with, um, or so, four to 500, I'm not sure exactly. And they pressed 450 copies. So it's a very, very small edition. Now, uh, I wanna go back in time, which I like to do when I make my videos, to my childhood. And I was given a copy I think it was for my birthday. So it was actually my 13th birthday or my bar mitzvah. I was given a copy of the debut Doors album and the copy I got was a stereo copy. Now, uh, I have some other records like this. Electra Records apparently had more mono covers at the time. So there was a oval gold sticker over the mono that said stereo. So my original copy of the debut Doors album was stereo. I am personally a fan of psychedelic records of that period of 67 on in stereo it goes back to that same summer that june whatever the date was where i literally on the day it came out was one of about a handful of people at this record music store as the person opened the box of Sgt. Pepper, Only Hearts Club Band. And the box he opened was stereo. And I was saving my money and doing chores and doing things and mowing lawns and delivering papers. And I would pay that extra dollar for a stereo copy And in 1967. To me, psychedelia should be stereo. Now, I know the whole thing of the Beatles. If you haven't heard Pepper in mono, you haven't heard Pepper. And I do have, I acquired in the last couple of years from my friend, the Coleman Collection, an original first press UK mono Pepper. And it's fabulous. It, it's a different record. I grew up on Stereo Sergeant Pepper. I like the swirling sounds, the left and right sounds of stereo. To me, Pepper is more of a rock and roll album. When the drums kick in on the Sgt. Pepper reprise uh, in mono, it's a kick-ass record. It's a different experience. Is it better? The Beatles said so. George Martin said so. 
but I prefer, now it may be because I grew up with it for 50 years, and even though in the 70s uh, I got a mono pepper, uh, I preferred stereo, and it's the same with the doors. So my copy all these years was, was stereo. Now, I don't even like to do shootouts, comparisons, and I'm going to do that here. I'm going to give you my personal opinion, and one man's opinion on this ERC doors, and I don't have a lot to compare it to. I do have an original Monarch first press mono that I acquired uh, a few years after I got my stereo copy. There's a little bit of a crunchiness to this. It's well played. It's been cleaned uh, many times ultrasonically, but there are some scratches and things, so it's not a dead quiet. On the other hand, I'll tell you, one of the pluses of the ERC is how quiet the pressing is, and it's beautifully pressed. I did have a couple issues, which I'll get to, and I'll, I'll let you know uh, what was corrected uh, when I received the ERC copy. Again, I'm not the audience for that, but I'm kind of an unlikely person to compare these records to. I don't have any of the other versions. Apparently, there was a Vinyl Me Please uh, edition of The Doors out in the last year or two. I don't have it. I no longer have The Doors box from, was it 2008, 2009, which was cut digitally. And I did have that, and I ended up selling it a while back. Uh, but in that box, there was a mono and stereo version of the first record. Now, those actually both sounded pretty good, as I recall. Again, I'm not comparing it to these today, but those are from Digital Source because there were talk uh, with Bruce Botnick, who worked on that, who was the original engineer uh, with producer Paul, Paul Rothschild of these Doors albums. Um, so they decided at the time, because of condition of some of the tapes, that they would do it from uh, digital sources and work on the digital thing. But... Um, Actually, that box was pretty good. Rhino put that out. And since I did that original Mazzy's version of an unboxing of the ERC, again, link below, uh, it's been announced that Rhino uh, in November is putting out uh, the complete, the first seven albums, six albums, seven albums, uh, as a Rhino box, all analog cut by Kevin Gray, part of their Rhino High Fidelity. And they announced that the first, the first album, this album, is from the Lido tape. Now, what is the Lido tape? The Lido tape is basically every version of the mono was cut from a Lido. It's a copy tape. And as Jock Holtzman, uh, the head of Electra, named it, Leadered Edited Duplicate Copy. So going back from the first mono, they used a dub copy, which is common in uh, records. To this day and back then uh, a lot of the copies you have may be copy tapes second generation from the uk to the us us to the uk vice versa and that is the copy that that original this original was cut from and the erc was cut from them apparently and again i don't follow the erc uh threads i don't know a much about them although they have a very special direct cutting system. Everything is done by hand. Very limited editions, which means it's a boutique-y, very expensive thing. I'm not against these kind of things. Again, I am not the audience for these. And to me, to be honest with you, the Mono Doors album always had some issues, and it just seems an unlikely choice for a label like that to do at this price point. Um, so I'm skeptical. I was skeptical uh, up front prior to listening to this. And I'll, t I'll talk to you about that. So my preference on this album is the stereo version. Something about stereo surrounding you, left and right, stereo psychedelia. Now, in terms of the music, again, the music's stupid. It's about the music first. For me, my personal take is those first Doors albums, the first album early in 1967, Strange Days towards the end of 1967, the fall, to me, are the very best Doors album, hands down. That's the essence of the Doors, the collective, uh, Jim Morrison's writing, his vocalizing. Every track on those two albums is a psychedelic 
rock and blues masterpiece as far as I'm concerned. I love Waiting for the Sun too. That is just a slightly notched down, but almost as good. And I like the, the entire catalog uh, with Jim Morrison while he was alive. But they became more blues-based and rock and a little more generic. Of course, everyone creams in their jeans uh, because of L.A. Woman and the sound of that record. Obviously, the best recorded sounding in terms of audiophile people. But sometimes for me, I feel they get hooked into that jazzy, you know, L.A. Woman and Riders of the Storm, kind of that... Uh, uh, easiness of, of that record well recorded as it is i think it's not the essence of what the doors are about for me and i know that uh chad Cassum and analog productions acoustic sounds uh, just did a uhqr 33 version of it i haven't uh, heard it and i can't uh, comment on any of the other releases of that album or the first album beyond the two I'm talking about here. After I went back and forth for the last literally two weeks playing this record at nauseum, I, I, I've probably played these six times each over the last um, two weeks, trying to mostly compare uh, the original mono, the original Monarch mono that I have, and the uh, ERC. But then after that, I had to play uh, the Chad's version, the quality QRP, uh, doors, double 45. Now, it's not a fair competition. This is stereo. This is double 45. I prefer the stereo. And I will say off the bat, the double 45 is fabulous. So I'm really curious to hear uh, what Kevin Gray did uh, for Rhino when that box comes out. And remember, uh, the first album in that, on this, all the way around, is not the original master tape. It's a copy tape. Again, nothing wrong with that. But it is sort of a fair fight. But 45, obviously, going to give you better dynamics. And, um, you know, I'll leave it at that. So let's go through this again. Now, if you watch that unboxing, Mazzy's unboxing, you'll see that the original copy I got had a seam split, which right off the bat, if I had paid 400 and something dollars, or if it was a sealed copy from a reseller at $700, I'd be pretty upset getting that. But to their credit, uh, Marcella, uh, the gift giver, it was a sealed copy, reached out to them. And within a few days, they FedExed me. And they do this quite this packaging, as I showed in that unboxing. Literally, this, all this cardboard, and it's in between all this cardboard. And once I got it, uh, the copy was perfect. Uh, no seam split, everything. So uh, they made good on it. And I will, uh, I thank ERC and Marcella for arranging that and, and sending a perfect copy. Now in that video, a few people noticed some issues. Now, uh, there weren't scratches, there were fingerprints though. And those came right off when I cleaned it. I did clean it uh, through the Humming Guru Nova and it cleaned fine, but I played it first and the record itself was, was dead quiet even before I cleaned it. But I did a, I gave it an ultrasonic, uh, the higher up time frame of, of Humming Guru's uh, Nova there. Now in that unboxing video, people noticed that the record looked slightly off center. And as it was, it didn't affect the sound, so I didn't have them send me another record. Again, if I had paid for it, uh, I just, left it at that and it's it sounds really good in terms of uh there's no warble there's no um problem based on that slight off center again go look at that video and you'll see so let's talk about the music and the sound again i love this record to me this is the epitome of that summer you heard light my fire everywhere you heard break on through everywhere you heard the end on FM radio when FM radio was really kind of starting out underground radio. This to me was an album. This obviously is Rustic Pillow and Sgt. Pepper are considered those the, the triumphant of records of that year. A lot of great psychedelic records in 1967. So let me showcase this. It comes with this PVC sleeve, which I've been told you should not leave them in. I'm surprised they do that, but Literally, I just got it, so I haven't had a chance. I showed the authenticity card here. Uh, again, number 256 out of 450. It has the OB, which I think OB is kind of a nice touch, but 
totally unnecessary unless you're in a store wanting to know about an album in Japan or album here, reading liner notes in a way like hype stickers. I don't think they're necessary when you're ordering directly, but it's a nice touch. When you're paying $400 plus, I think it's a nice touch as much as they can do. The cover itself, the printing that is exquisite. It's so close and as good as the original. So they get high marks for the cover there. Really well done. And the record is perfectly pressed, flat, and quiet. Really well done. They use the Electra logo, the original Electra, and the original goldish label from the first pressing. Then it went to red. And of course, in the 70s, you got the um, butterfly, uh, Electra butterfly label there. Unlike what we're going to get from Rhino Hi-Fi, when they put out uh, their series of audiophile uh, records. They have their own logo that they use on all those titles. Some people don't like that. I personally don't care because, again, it's the music. So let's talk about the comparison. The bottom line is the original Monarch wins over the ERC. But there's some inconsistencies. I think my favorite song in terms of the sound on the ERC is the end. And I looked at you, although when I heard at, I looked at you, the second track on side two, all of a sudden there was dropout. All of a sudden the volume dropped in it and I, I had to play it again and uh, it was unsettling. I do like the sound of it, but that dropout was unsettling. Now I went back and I listened to my original mono copy or my original Electra Monarch, and there was a slight drop out there, not as noticeable, but drop out that I never noticed. And it took me listening to uh, the ERC to notice the drop out on the original version, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as noticeable. I find that uh, Break On Through is one of my favorite. I always like the bass on that. Um, neither is great, to be honest with you. Um, I give it the edge to the original Monarch on that. Um, I've heard people say there's distortion. I really haven't noticed a lot of distortion in that opening, but songs like Soul Kitchen, again, and I looked at you, are the two rockers on this album that just are killer, along with Break On Through, obviously. And I love those songs. I love it. Uh, Crystal Ship is that very psychedelic-y, ethereal song that I love. And I love that years later, uh, Ray Manzarek produced the band X, a version of that song on their debut album. Totally redone, in your face, up front, loud. And I, again, as I said in other videos, I love when a, a band uh, covers something but does it in their own way and makes it theirs. So I love that song on here. Of course, uh, 20th Century Fox as well and uh, Alabama song. Uh, where I first heard about uh, Bert Holbrecht and Kurt Vile. I just love that song. But again, the drums on the ERC are weak to me. I love the snap. I mean, John Densmore's drumming is great in this band, and he has a certain jazziness uh, to his playing. And a cymbal, ride cymbal, a snare that pops all the time. And it doesn't pop as much on the ERC. It pops so much better on the original um, Monarch, the original Electra Mono uh, there. And even on Light My Fire, uh, Robbie Krieger's guitar solo in the last third, uh, you know, in the single edit, you don't have that whole solo. Everything was edited down uh, for the single. And I should have compared my mono 45 edited down. I didn't pull it out. It's probably well played, well seasoned, well patinaed, but it would have been interesting to hear the mono single. Uh, my guess is it's a different mix. I don't know that, but um, I didn't play that to compare and I do have one. But Light My Fire, as good as it is on here, it just didn't snap like the original one. Now, my guess is if someone doesn't have an original mono and they don't have a mono copy at all and they bought the ERC, there's a little bit of, of the um, placebo effect, I would imagine. I would think they would really like this because it is a good sounding album for what it is. But as I said at the top of this video, for what it is, it's not a great sounding record to begin with as great of a recording rock and roll wise psychedelic wise it is it's not an audiophile recording 
And to me, the ERC is like a collector specimen more than an audiophile great recording. When when Intervention or or QRP, Chad Kassam, uh, Analog Productions does a record, does those double 45 records uh, of the Doors or any of the 33s they've done, uh, even the UHQRs, most of the time it's a great recording. I think uh, going to 1967, I know they've done uh, the first Jimi Hendrix record. I think that is a recording that doesn't need to have an audio file, One Step or QRP, UHQR, because it, again, like this, it's not this amazing dynamic recording. It's a great album. It's a great rock album. You don't have to hear everything, you know, separated, even in mono. Now, I will say this. I do not have a mono cart. I'm sure on a mono cart system, you're going to get that much more improvement. So this is just my opinion from my take comparing to a the equivalent record, but the original first press mono of Electric of the Doors record. Um, I think all in all, this is a waste of an ERC uh, record. Having said that, I've never heard an ERC record. I've never owned another ERC record. I know people that swear by their classical records, some of their jazz records. To me, some of the rock choices they've made, they did the first Love album as well. I think that's also from a Lido copy tape. So from my point of view, if you have an original mono and it's in pretty good shape, it's gonna kick ass over the ERC, I think. If you're not used to the mono and you play them back to back, I think you might be disappointed in the mono version. Now, as I said earlier, I am a fan of psychedelic stereo from 67 on. Old rock and roll, 50s, early 60s rock and roll, real rock and roll to me, mono's the place to go. Garage rock from 65, 66, for the most part, mono is the way to go. But once later, 66, 67 started happening, I'm all in on stereo. Revolver, the Beatles' great album from 1966. To me, the stereo is the one. Although I do like the mono on that, it's a nice option. I think the best thing about uh, Doors, this is having the option of mono. Uh, but it's not the way this record should be. Others will disagree, and that's fine. We have a different taste, what we are used to, what we grew up with. In closing, I just want to share the Acoustic Sounds Analog Productions Double 45 Doors. Again, I have all these Double 45s, and to be honest with you, I'm not a fan of Double 45s in rock and roll. That's why I've only ordered one of the Atlantic 45s. I do have some in my collection. Uh, when UHQR put out Kinda Blue, I bought the 33, not the 45. I bought these because I wanted really good sounding Doors records. And Despite what anyone says, the stereo on this, again from a copy tape, this is what Chad used for this, this sounds excellent. I've heard people say, oh, the first album is not as great as the rest of them. That may be true, but this is amazing. After two weeks of listening to those mono albums, I didn't listen to this right away, I pulled this out, and this kicked ass over the mono records for a lot of reasons. The drums snap, you hear more bass on it, it's a better sounding record. I like the atmosphere of this stereo record. I like that, again, that jazzy drums on the left and the guitars on the right. I just love that. And again, especially on these first two records, I just think uh, these records are sublime. And the, to me, the best of the doors, uh, in my opinion. I've been reading lately, even people talking about with the Rhino coming out, oh, there's just really a greatest hits band. No, that's not the case. Greatest hits, they have a lot of great singles back in the 60s, but they were an album band. They have deep cuts that are on here. Like I said, uh, I looked at you, Backdoor Man, obviously the end. You don't get those uh, long tracks on a greatest hits record. Uh, when the music's over, turn out the lights. You don't get those kind of tracks there. Alabama song again as well. This is amazing album. This is amazing pressing. Analog Productions did perfect on this Doors catalog. Now, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, Kevin Gray doing the Rhino Doors record. Because I've heard Ke Kevin say something about the later 33s he did for 
Music Matters Jazz with his new rig, his new cutting uh, studio situation. Are, sound better than the early, the first Music Matters Jazz records that are 45 RPM. Usually people assume that just because it's 45, wider grooves, shorter sides, uh, you can get a lot more of the dynamics in it. And there is something to that. And But again, I'm not usually a 45 person. And if those Kevin Gray Rhino cuts are really close to this, I will probably uh, get rid of these double 45s, even if they have the slight edge. But if they don't, then I'll keep these. And um, again, because I don't need everything in my collection like this, but I prefer the stereo, so I'm looking forward to that. So my personal take is I wouldn't pay $450 or $700 for any ERC records. That's not in my collecting interest as a record collector. It's about the music first. Um, even collectibles, I rarely uh, spend. That's just not my thing. And I don't disparage anyone from uh, buying the ERCs or buying a rare record for $500 or $1,000. It's just not for me. I don't need something sitting on my shelf. That is a collectible. To me, ERC is a premium product that is a collectible. And uh, especially uh, this title. I think it was a uh, misguided title for them to press, even though it's an important record. I think uh, they'd be better suited uh, choosing other titles. So that's it. Thank us again, Marcella. Thank you, uh, everyone, for watching. Click all the buttons here so you get more uh, Mazzy on the tube. Mazzy loves you.